You know, I think people do recognize that they need to exercise more. Exercise can prevent certain health problems. But today we're going to go way beyond that and talk about the level of importance that this exercise has over our health through looking at what would happen if you didn't exercise in activity, call that sedentary syndrome or couch sitting. I want to look at and slice up this, this topic of physical activity from the viewpoint of motion and how much motion someone has injected into their life or lack of motion and how that relates to your health and disease. I found an interesting uh, research paper that talks about um, inactivity as the primary cause for over 35 chronic illnesses. We have sarcopenia, which is loss of muscle when we age. We have, of course, the metabolic syndrome, which includes the raising of uh, blood sugars, cholesterol, as well as hypertension. And of course, the obvious thing is obesity, but also insulin resistance, diabetes, fatty liver, cancer. So there's a huge impact on how exercise can enhance your immune system, decreasing your risk for upper respiratory infections, heart disease, arrhythmias, and coronary artery dysfunction. Then we have the stroke, dementia, mood disorders. And then we have bone disorders, osteoporosis, increasing your risk of getting a fracture, arthritis, and immune deficiency problems. And then we have digestion and even erectile dysfunction. And so at the end of this video, I think the next time you think twice about exercising or maybe you want to put it off, uh, this might motivate you to jump in and start moving and start exercising. Let's take it right from the top, your mitochondria. What does exercise do for your mitochondria? It increases something called mitochondrial biogenesis. What is that? That is a condition where you're generating more mitochondria, bigger mitochondria, more mitochondrial uh, efficiency, stronger mitochondria. And if you know anything about the mitochondria, it's essential for the production of energy. And also it's highly associated with a lot of diseases as well, even cancer. And so by exercising, you're getting more oxygen through your mitochondria, you're generating more oxygen, and you're reducing more oxidative stress. Even though exercise creates oxidative stress and free radicals and things like that, the strength of the mitochondria then in turn, um, through the increased uh, production of antioxidants, called endogenous antioxidants, in other words, when you exercise, your body starts building up an army of antioxidants to handle more oxidative stress and just stress in general. So even though exercise creates stress, the extra strength that you get from more mitochondria, you can then counter more more stress. Encounter other types of stress, not just oxidative stress, but pollution, mental stress, physical stress. And if we just take this one thing, your mitochondria become a lot stronger in quantity and strength just from exercise. That's probably one of the best reasons to exercise. There's a direct correlation between improving the innate and acquired immune system, increasing more antibodies, more strength in your white blood cells to overcome immune problems. And even if you have an infection, you have a much greater strength of getting through the infection. And this also relates to the strength of your immune system fighting cancer and avoiding cancer. I just did a brief uh, scan on this topic and there's at least 13 major cancers that you can decrease your risk from just from exercise. And even when people go through chemo, they can get through chemo a lot better if they exercise on a regular basis. Now let's talk about neurogenesis. What is that? That is the uh, regrowing of your neurons, okay, in your brain and in the rest of the nervous system. So it does it through more blood flow, through another thing called epigenetics, which is you're stressing out the body to cause it to adapt. But very specifically, you can start regrowing nerves in the hippocampus, which is directly related to your memory and decreasing dementia. You also can indirectly affect your mood. Bringing a person out of depression or anxiety or some type of post-traumatic stress syndrome. In fact, there's a direct correlation with how much you move or how fast you move and your mood. If you notice people who are depressed, just take a look. Are they moving much? No, they're inactive. People that are way up on the mood scale are moving all the time. They're moving fast. And then we just have what exercise does 
uh, with oxygen throughout all of your organs, there's a huge problem with the lack of oxygen. It's called hypoxia uh, or ischemia. And by flooding more oxygen or circulation through the organs, you're getting more communication through your body. And that can definitely decrease the risk of all sorts of chronic illnesses. I mean, when you think about it, when you're exercising, you're really exercising not just your muscles, you're exercising your organs too and your lymphatic system. Another thing that exercise can do is help your blood sugars, a very potent effect on insulin. It makes insulin more sensitive. It reduces insulin resistance, which is behind a lot of other issues as well. And then you have also what exercise can do to elasticity of your skin, making you look younger. Elasticity to the inside of your arteries that can allow the arteries to expand and adapt to certain pressures and to help um, postpone this rigid hardening of the arteries. And of course, we have the elasticity of your joints, your tendons, your ligaments, and then also um, the muscles themselves. I mean, if we just take atrophy, for example, loss of muscle, there's really only one uh, stimulus of muscle growth, okay? Just one, and that is exercise or physical activity. All the other factors like nutrition and amino acids, um, they have to be there as a foundation, but those in themselves do not trigger the growth of muscle. Exercise or tension on the muscle is the only factor that will help you grow your muscles. And then if we kind of take a deep dive right into your cells, you have DNA. What does exercise do for your DNA? Well, our bodies have evolved with a lots of motion and movement and exercise and running away from tigers and running after animals to catch them and eat them. When we exercise, we survive better. Our DNA starts to repair. It starts to turn on survival uh, mechanisms and it turns off um, anti-survival mechanisms. Those of us that exercise and become fit have a much greater capacity to repair at the DNA or cellular level. And so exercise is a physical stress that can indirectly greatly help mental stress as well. And of course, most people focus on exercise to lose weight, which is about a 15% benefit, which is, I mean, it's not nothing, but it's, it's something. 15% is not bad, so it can help you lose weight. Of course, the diet is way more important, but if that's your primary motivation to exercise to lose weight, then great. I mean, I think exercise can really help uh, work on the muscle to get more toning and help you get rid of this atrophy. And it can also help you release a lot of fat off your liver, as in shrinking a fatty liver. Another thing that exercise can do is help counter some of the bad habits that people have. So if you take a look at a smoker or a person who eats junk food or a person who takes a lot of medications or a person who eats a lot of sugar, if they're exercising or doing more physical activity like physical work, which is sometimes even better than actual exercise, what they're doing is they're strengthening the mitochondria, and the mitochondria are being stronger in numbers, in size, and strength, can now metabolize the extra sugar, deal with the extra stress. Because of its uh, larger antioxidant uh, network, it can now help counter some of the bad habits that people have. So I hope you're getting the idea that exercise is not a trivial thing. It is uh, a necessity. Now, what about for the endocrine system? Talking about like uh, the pituitary gland. Uh, well, you're going to increase growth hormone, which is the anti-aging hormone. It's the greatest fat-burning hormone. It occurs mostly at night. And intense exercise is probably the most potent uh, stimulus of growth hormone. Exercise increases testosterone, and it also decreases insulin. So exercise is very, very important uh, with the endocrine system. Exercise also can lower cortisol uh, when you do aerobic exercise, like hiking or walking, things like that. Now, when you do intense exercise, you're going to stimulate cortisol, especially if you're doing it of any duration, but then it's going to come down as you recover. And that is the key thing with exercise. You must focus also on recovery to get all of these benefits because if you don't, you're going to overtrain and you're not going to get these benefits. And I might have already touched on this, but exercise in general increases your capacity to handle more life stress. And that alone is probably one of the most important benefits because of what stress does to the body and how it relates to chronic illness. So I want you to comment down below on your current level 
of motion. How much motion are you really doing? Like, let's say on a scale from one to 10, 10 being regular, consistent uh, exercise, okay? Zero being completely sedentary. Give me a number down below in the comment section of how much motion you're injecting into your life. And just maybe this might motivate you to implement this new epigenetic action that can greatly increase your lifespan and your quality of life. So now that we talked about exercise, if you have not seen my video on stress, okay, and how stress can cause illness, you should probably check that out. I put it up right here.